Greetings, I'm John Spirit. I'm Archer Ezekiel. Having big power means we can do big things, and welcome to Sky Greg Super Shorts. Notice I didn't call them recaps, because we're basically recording them while we're playing, so, you know, I think that's better anyway. We are working on the electric blast furnace, and to that end, we've made a an LV alloy smelter, which should be faster than this extremely slow steam alloy smelter. I am also currently mixing copper and zinc into brass, so that I can get cobalt brass dust, which I'll need to make the cobalt brass buzzsaw blade and make the cutter. The cutter is mostly a convenience thing, I want to make glass panes at a better rate, but it'll also allow us to get diamond plates and make bolts from rods more efficiently. To get the aluminum dust for the cobalt brass, I need to right-click some impure piles of aluminum dust on a cauldron. We can't currently smelt aluminum into ingots and then crush it into dust. But you can use your hammer on crushed aluminum ore, which you get by macerating aluminum ore, which we have over here on our long line of simple ore generators. With this aluminum dust, I can make my cobalt brass. Why do I want a cutter? To make the glass pane ratio slightly better, so that I can make laser nodes from laser IO, which allow us to transfer larger amounts of fluid than the GregTech pipes do. Laser IO is a mod that lets you transport items, fluids, and energy wirelessly over distances. Laser IO allows you to put up to nine cards in a slot for every face of the laser node. And cards allow you to configure the way that the node behaves interacting with blocks on those sides of it. For example, let's choose the south, which is the normal potent fluid pipe, where we want to put a bunch of steam to fill up four steam turbine generators really fast all the time. We'll put a fluid card into the south section and right-click to open up its inventory. Normally, at this point, we could do things like add filters, but that requires, like, more glass panes, and I don't want to do that. Eventually, though, we'll have a larger laser I.O. system that needs filters in order to work effectively. But on the most basic level, we can set this to, this will insert into the pipe next to it. We'll use channel 8, the gray channel, for steam. And then over next to the super tank where we're storing a lot of steam, I'll put another fluid card, this one set to extract. Its current transfer amount is one bucket per second. When you insert card over clockers, you can increase the transfer rate. So right now we're transferring a bucket per tick, which is more than enough for the, I believe, 256 millibuckets per tick we need. And we can even increase the transfer amount to 8 buckets per tick, although we don't actually need that. But we might later. To actually link these laser connectors, you need to have connectors and lasers at most 8 blocks apart. You can connect nodes together if they're close enough, but since these nodes are very far apart, we decided to slap a few connectors between them. To connect nodes, you can shift right click on a source node or laser, and right click on anything you want to connect it to. Right clicking again will disconnect. With the laser set to channel 8, when Arch connects the laser connector and node, we'll see the steam turbine quickly fill up with steam. Very good. They're all fanning away in completely different directions, because who cares? We have four steam turbine generators, because 128 EU per take is MV, the basic amount of power required to run an electric blast furnace. LV energy hatches take two amps each, so you can just plug two amps from two steam turbines into two different hatches, and you get four amps, which is MV. I don't think that works for an average MV machine, but for multi-blocks, it does. We've placed our input and output buses down here, as well as the input hatch for fluid in case we need to put nitrogen and oxygen. The one hiccup we notice is that the muffler absolutely has to be at the top, all the other blocks can be wherever. We just need to run maintenance on it, of course. Arch has already put aluminium dust in the blast furnace, the first thing that we'll want to make. And all I have to do is turn off maintenance, and it should start running? Turns out the electric blast furnace also requires a program circuit, which we're fixing right now. And now I can press working enabled, and boom, the blast furnace has started glowing. Wow, amazing, what a machine. It's probably gobbling steam right now. You can see the steam going down the little node laser thing, which is pretty fun. This doesn't work quite as well if you have shaders enabled. And now we have aluminum. Arch, why do we need aluminum? Medium voltage holes. Each age has its own special metal that is used for its holes, just like it has its own superconductor and its own circuit. And now we're one step closer to being able to make MV machines, but we're still really far away because we need MV circuits. But that's what we'll work on next. 
By the way, if you're concerned about loss from these tin cables, because we're only one step away between the generators and the hatches, we don't actually experience any loss issues. But it would possibly be worth it eventually to install the superconducting wire. Arch doesn't seem to think it's that important, but I think it's a fun little challenge. So we'll see what happens there. We're currently forge hammering some aluminum ore, which we're now doing again, and then we'll purify this aluminum dust in a cauldron like I showed you earlier. But now we can actually smelt it into aluminum ingots using our friend the electric blast furnace. One thing we can do to speed up the blast furnace, though, is to add nitrogen to it, which we can get from air. I'm pretty sure that's our next project. To make the nitrogen gas, you need to centrifuge air, which you can get from a gas collector. So we need both of those objects. We're also getting an arc furnace, which will allow us to make annealed copper, which makes a lot of recipes for circuits more efficient. And we're about to run out of circuits, so we do need to do that. Looks like the pipes we have here are insufficient to run the blast furnace at full speed, so Arch is making aluminum pipes right now. These fluid pipes have 600 millibuckets per tick of transfer speed, which is enough for the 320 that we need. We probably should have made them bigger, but we didn't have much aluminum on us. We made two steam turbine generators, which are currently powering the gas collector, centrifuge, and arc furnace. The gas collector does not actually need exposure to air as far as I can tell, and it collects air. It requires a program circuit of 1, and we have an auto output down to the bottom. The centrifuge goes freakishly slow, but we have more than enough oxygen to run the arc furnace making annealed copper. Copper ingots turn into annealed copper ingots in an arc furnace pretty quickly using oxygen gas. And not very much oxygen gas at that. So even though it takes 5 million years, it'll probably be fine. Arch is using some right now to make annealed copper because we can use it to make circuits easier. My next project will be to supply nitrogen gas to a fluid input hatch that I'm moving up here, so that I can speed up the working of the blast furnace without taking any more power. I've connected the potent fluid pipes up to the hatch, and now I just need to set this to auto output, and the nitrogen should start filling up the hatch. Now hopefully our aluminium will take less time. I have no way of telling, but it's probably working. Ah, here. Arch has told me, and I found in the recipes here, that you need to set a program circuit to configuration 2 to use this recipe. I'm changing that now, I'm putting in the aluminium dust, and... I don't know, it looks like it's going faster. Another magical fact is we can turn sand into two glass directly using the arc furnace, instead of using the terrible, terrible recipe where you mortar sand into quartz sand, turn that into glass dust, and alloy smelts it with a block mold. While Arch works on 64 circuits using the slightly more efficient anneal copper recipe... Okay, a lot more efficient. I am base rating 64's failurite at a rate of 1 every 20 seconds, and crying. Because to get diodes for MV circuits, you need small piles of gallium arsenide dust. Gallium arsenide dust comes from gallium and arsenic, and gallium dust is best found, in our case, from sphalerite. You can either centrifuge purified sphalerite dust to get gallium dust, this recipe involving a macerator doesn't really work because you need the higher tier macerators to make it work. But once you get sphalerite, you can electrolyze it for a 5% chance of gallium dust. My favorite kind of chance. Thankfully, one gallium arsenide dust makes four diodes because small piles are one fourth of a dust. Sorry, eight diodes thanks to annealed copper. But you do need two of those for every good electronic circuit, which is very sad, TM. Thankfully, we can now make other things much cheaper, like the vacuum tube, which is being made at the best recipe we can using annealed copper. Just, you know, meanwhile, sphalerite is terrible. It's very possible, and cursed, that you can't use a centrifuge that's LV to get this gallium byproduct, because this is part of an ore processing chain, and typically, at least for the macerator, these bonus ore products only come if you have higher tier buildings. Yep. Oh, never mind, there's a gallium right there on video for you. I have just made a forge hammer and a sifter. The forge hammer will let me crush down raw sphalerite into crushed sphalerite ore much faster than the macerator. While the sifter will do... Arch, what the hell will the sifter do? The sifter is for the uh, MV and HVH, where we need to make many different types of diodes by engraving them with the laser engraver. Thank you, Arch, for telling me what the hell this sifter is for. To get the arsenic, you need real guard dust, um, which you can then centrifuge. We tried using cobaltite, but the recipe to get arsenic from cobaltite was MV. 
We're getting Gallium at a very good rate from Centrifuge and Purified Piles of Sphalerite Dust, so I feel like this was a good idea, because once I have 16 Gallium Dust, that's equivalent to 64 MV Circuits, which is a lot of MV Circuits. Sorry, I can't read recipes. Actually, it's two stacks of MV Circuits, because one Gallium goes to two Gallium Arsenide. Pretty cool. While we work on the Arsenic and Gallium, we've made some adjustments to our Blast Furnace. Quadruple Bronze Fluid Pipes from Greg Tech have multiple channels and can transfer multiple fluids and we have them hooked up to both of our super tanks. That way, we can transport both oxygen and nitrogen into these two LV input hatches. Why do we want oxygen? Because we can now make steel from wrought iron twice as fast as the primitive blast furnace. 15 seconds per wrought iron. Steel. It's a steel! We'll still run the primitive blast furnace, I say, with the primitive blast furnace empty. But now I can shove 34 wrought iron into this input, and it's going pretty fast, I guess. Another thing we now have is a villager that we can trade with to get Fluix crystals. We are slowly in the process of getting everything we need for a functioning Applied Energistics 2 network. We have, for example, a charger which turns Certus Quartz crystals into charged Certus Quartz crystals, and an inscriber that will eventually let us make all the basic processing units. Fluix crystals are usually made using charged Certus crystals, redstone, and nether quartz, but that's like a lot of work. So why do that when we can just trade with a villager? Emerald's free! And now it's time to mix Gallium and Arsenic with a programmed circuit of 1 to get our delicious Gallium Arsenide dust extremely slowly. I'm just gonna turn it all into diodes now. Don't mind me, I only need 64 annealed copper for all these fine wires. It's taking forever, everything is so slow, it will all never end. What are we doing anyway? We're making good electronic circuits. Um, right now using the meh recipe that requires three circuits, a steel plate, but if you use the circuit assembler recipe, you don't need any steel plates, you need one less LV circuit. And you need tin instead of steel. And I don't know why anyone would ever use soldering alloy for this when they could just use tin. So we'll make our first two circuits, which are required to make the basic circuit assembler, and then make the rest of the good electronic circuits in the circuit assembler. I'm also making a second normal assembler because, like I said, the diodes are taking forever, but I also need this assembler to make phenolic circuit boards, so... Anyway, now that we have this second basic assembler, I can use wood pulp and glue to make phenolic circuit boards under Program Circuit 1. I just need, you know, so much glue, and it will take forever, because everything is taking forever. But hey, at least we have lots of diodes. The other benefit of the circuit assembler, which I believe I forgot to state, is that basic electronic circuits become doubly as efficient. And now, without further ado, our first MV circuit, which we can then use to make our first basic circuit assembler. And now we can use the basic circuit assembler to make the MV circuits so much better. Somewhat better. And the basic electronic circuits much, much better. Which is why I'm making the ingredients for <clears throat> four stacks of basic electronic circuits. This has taken me so long. The main issue is having to centrifuge 256 sticky resin into glue, which takes 9 million years, which is why Arch is currently working on making basic MV infrastructure, because we're pretty sure he can make an MV centrifuge before this glue finishes being made. We have here an MV16X battery buffer, which Arch is planning to fill with lithium MV batteries. And on top we have 16X annealed copper cables, which are made from annealed copper and only have a 1 EU per meter loss. Per amp. Yes, you actually do have to make sure you connect them with the wire cutter, and because they are full blocks, the only way to tell whether they're connected is to use the wire cutter overlay, because God hates us. There is no visual difference when you connect the cable to the block you're facing. We're going to make our first MV circuits using the better recipe. If I just put this liquid tin in, wow, it's working. And now we are making two stacks of basic electronic circuits. We ended up not making the MV centrifuge, because the sticky resin did end up mostly being used by the time Arch was ready to make the centrifuge, so if we make it, I'll let you know, but... Anyway, at this point you're probably just dragging y'all along, we made MV circuits. That is the video. In the next episode, we'll do stuff that requires MV. But for now, that's it for today's episode. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. We hope you enjoyed!